So swimming right through where you are right now, uh, lots of sharks, sea turtles, crocodiles. There's a, a sea monster that lives here called a Mosasaurus. It was about 55 feet long, had paddles for limbs, a six foot jaw, and then it has a second set of teeth at the back of its throat pointing backwards to keep you from swimming back out. <laughs> Um, dinosaurs are around, but they're up on the coast. The coast is maybe 15, 20 miles to the west of here. All dinosaurs lived on land, but we're close enough to the coast here that we get a mixture of land and sea fossils here. So we get dinosaurs, occasionally they die on the beach, they fill up with decay gases as they die, and then they float out to sea as kind of these giant bobbing meat boobs. And then as the carcass rots, the skeletons start to fall to the sea floor. So we get the occasional dinosaur bone here, birds, woods, things like that. Now, uh, the dinosaurs persisted for 165 million years. They were the indomitable champions of an entire Earth age. And all that ends one day when an asteroid, the size of Philadelphia, going about 45,000 miles an hour, hits off the Yucatan Peninsula, 1,700 miles from here. It blows a crater in the ground that's 110 miles across by 12 miles deep. So that's bigger than New Jersey. Imagine what New Jersey weighs. Right? So take that, pulverize it into little pieces, lift it up through the atmosphere. You've given that mass a tremendous amount of potential gravitational energy. And when that stuff comes back in, it's got to balance the energy books. If you see uh, pictures of Apollo space capsules coming back into the atmosphere, flaming back into the atmosphere, imagine that day trillions upon trillions of tiny millimeter-sized particles flaming back into the atmosphere, each one heating up a little parcel of air around itself. And the result that day is within an hour, global temperatures hit something like pizza. So the dinosaurs, after 165 million years, perish in an hour or so. It's absolutely shocking. You're okay in the ocean that day, unless you're under the impact. Uh, but then all that dust and gas in the atmosphere, it shrouds out the sun, and pretty soon it cuts off photosynthesis. Phytoplankton then can't do their it's thing. With the base something. of the food chain kicked out, then ocean ecosystems collapse, and we have two parallel mass extinctions, which result in about 75% of species going extinct in the geological instant. So that layer, the impact layer, which is known from the fallout of that event, has been identified by geologists in about 350 spots around the world, but no significant fossils have ever been found in that layer. And paleontologists have been searching for this since this idea of the asteroid impact came out in 1980. They've been searching all over the world, and I myself have looked for this layer with fossils in it. I've looked in the Sahara Desert, in Patagonia, in, in China, in the Gobi Desert, Wyoming, Montana. Found the layer lots of times, but no fossils. And then I found it in a pit behind the lows in South Jersey. <laughs>